William Dalrymple, Nine Lives, In Search of the Sacred in Modern India. And Nine Lives, In Search of the Sacred in Modern India, William Dalrymple uses his skillful storytelling to bring us closer to understanding the complexity of religious beliefs in India. Weaving stories from different regions and involving different belief systems like Jainism, Hinduism, and Buddhism, Dalrymple explores the interplay of faith, history, and society. In this summary, we'll learn about the deeply ascetic practices of Jain monks, the social oppression in Kerala, the resistance of Tibetan monks against the Chinese occupation, and the esoteric creed of wandering minstrels called bowels. The introduction sets the stage for readers to gain a deeper appreciation of India's diverse beliefs and the people who practice them. Jainism and Asceticism Jainism is an ancient religion that emerged in the Ganges Basin and has deep roots in asceticism. Jainism is a religion that dates back to the 3rd century BCE and originated in the Ganges Basin, where it shares roots with Hinduism and Buddhism. Jainism considers asceticism to be a foundational commitment and a path to salvation. The rejection of worldly attachments and the practice of self-discipline are significant traditional values shared by all three religions, but Jainism stands out in its strict adherence to ascetic practices. For instance, Jain monks pluck their hair out by the root instead of shaving their heads like Buddhist monks. Additionally, bathing with soap and water is forbidden, and instead, Jain monks may only clean themselves with a wet towel. The term Jain derives from the Sanskrit word Jina, which means liberator or spiritual conqueror. According to Jain scriptures, there have been 24 great Jinas, human teachers who achieved transcendent knowledge of the universe through self-denial. Jainism's asceticism is a direct response to the perceived moral failings of Hinduism, particularly the willingness of Brahmins to slaughter animals, which Jains and Buddhists criticize. They also object to the caste system's inherent social superiority, which they reject. Jain asceticism purports that self-denial is the only path to real sacrifice and liberation. Jains argue that purity rituals cannot result in salvation, which is only achieved through asceticism. Jain monks must beg for food by placing one arm over their shoulder, and if passers-by refuse to give them food, they must go to bed hungry. Jainism's strong emphasis on asceticism reveals itself in even the smallest details of a Jain monk's day-to-day -day life. Jainism and Spiritual Liberation The Jain faith and its principle of ahimsa, or non-violence, are explored through the life of a Jain nun named Prasenamity Mataji. The author introduces readers to Jainism's origins and traditions, including the story of Emperor Chandragupta Maurya's conversion and Prince Bahubali's spiritual journey. The life and beliefs of Prasenamity Mataji are also highlighted, including her dedication to non-attachment and her companion's decision to embrace Salakana, a voluntary fast ending in death. The author's observations on the pilgrimage to the Holy Jain site at Shravanabalagala are woven throughout, providing a rich context for readers to understand the spiritual practices of this fascinating faith. Oppression in Kerala Kerala, India's Spice Garden has a rich history of trade and fertile land, but also a dark past and present of social oppression. The caste system in Kerala was notorious for its rigid hierarchies and violence against lower castes. Even today, Dalits face caste bigotry and discrimination from higher castes in various forms, from unequal lunch practices to taboo behaviors. In the next part, the interaction between social inequality and religion in Kerala will be explored, as we see how individuals like Hari Das navigate this oppressive system. The Yam Ceremonies, a voice for the Dalits. The Yam is a religious ceremony in Kerala that allows the Dalit community to voice their complaints against upper caste Keralans. Unlike other religious rites, they are controlled by Dalit priests and take place in small shrines and sacred groves deep in the countryside. During the ceremony, Hindu gods incarnate themselves in the bodies of dancers, usually from the lower castes, to enact justice that was missing in the laborer's own life. These ceremonies give the Dalit communities a sense of solidarity and self-confidence while creating their own canon of heroes and set of rituals. The Life of a Tibetan Hermit 
Tashi Pasang's journey from a potential yak herder to a Buddhist hermit is a story of spiritual transformation and the pursuit of true happiness. Tashi Pasang was born in 1936 to a family of Tibetan yak herders. Despite his family tradition, Pasang's great uncle saw his potential as a monastery student and convinced him to become a Buddhist monk. Pasang learned the importance of avoiding desire, greed, pride, and attachment, the illusions that bring only strife and misery. Techniques such as meditation, memorizing holy scripture, and isolation helped him overcome his worldly desires. After three years of instruction, Pong spent four months in a cave in the mountains to learn the value of solitude. His days were filled with four thousand prostrations and prayer until hunger and fatigue overwhelmed him. But after two weeks in the cave, he experienced a shift in consciousness. He finally grasped the vanity of pleasures and ambitions, and his mind became clear as he felt his sins being washed away. The hermit's life had purified him. Pang realized that this was true happiness, and he decided to devote himself to a life of quiet devotion. Even so, history had other plans for him. Pasang's journey from a potential yak farmer to a Buddhist hermit is a story of spiritual transformation and the pursuit of true happiness. Through his experiences, we learn the value of solitude and the importance of letting go of worldly desires. Tibetan Resistance and the Price of Violence Following the collapse of the Chinese Qing dynasty in 1912, Tibet gained its independence, only to be reoccupied by the Chinese in 1950. Tibetan monks like Paang, who took up arms in response to China's efforts to destroy Buddhism in 1954, faced a moral dilemma, as non-violence is a central tenet of Buddhism. Paang and his poorly equipped resistance group were quickly defeated by the Chinese army, and he fled to India to join other Tibetans in Dharamsala. In 1962, India recruited Tibetans like Paang to fight in a special mountain warfare unit, promising them the chance to liberate Tibet. The promise was never kept, and years later Pong realized he had sinned by killing men for no good reason during the Bangladesh War. He spent the rest of his life atoning for his actions. Baul's Road to Spiritual Enlightenment The Baul's are wandering minstrels in northeast India who teach an esoteric spiritual philosophy. They believe God lies within individuals who seek truth in the here and now, and their doctrine combines influences from various religious traditions. Baul's see value in all creeds, and their teachings draw on ancient humanist traditions that leave questions about the origin of the universe open. Every year, thousands of men gather to smoke marijuana, exchange gossip, sing, and dance around bonfires on the floodplains of the Ajoy River. These men are known as Baul's or Thmadmen, in Bengali. For over 500 years, these wandering minstrels have traveled northeastern India's roads, stopping only to perform their songs. Their art is a means of teaching an esoteric spiritual philosophy that draws on ancient Indian religious traditions. At the root of the Baul's creed is a belief that defies conventional religion, God does not dwell in idols or the afterlife. Rather, God can be found in the bodies of those who seek truth in the present by giving up worldly possessions, taking to the road, and following the path of love. The Baul's teachings combine influences from India's various religious traditions, and their unique doctrine leaves questions about the origin of the universe open. Baul's see value in all creeds, and their journey involves praying in temples and mosques, worshipping Hindu deities like Krishna, and drawing wisdom from texts revered by Buddhists and Muslim ascetics known as Sufis. Their doctrine is a melding of influences that can guide the attentive toward enlightenment, the form of enlightenment known to those who have learned to love God from their own heart. The Baul's guard a body of knowledge that encompasses breathing techniques, sexuality, philosophy, and asceticism. Their doctrine is a distinct form of spiritual philosophy that seeks to provide individuals with a road map to self-enlightenment. It has been around for over 500 years, and its continued influence underscores the value of a spiritual journey guided by love and an open mind. Kanai Das Baul, From Tragedy to Singing for the Divine Kanai Das Baul's life journey from a tragic childhood to becoming a wandering minstrel singing songs to connect common people with the divine is an inspiring one. Kanai Das Baul, a wandering minstrel, 
had a tragic childhood. Losing his eyesight at a young age, he faced the loss of his brother, father, and sister one after the other. After his sister's death, he decided to leave his village and become a wandering singer. A passing Baul had heard his singing and invited him to become his pupil. Although his family refused this offer, Kanai never forgot the name of the hermitage where the Baul lived and resolved to find him. He succeeded in finding the ashram after a challenging journey and was welcomed by his future mentor. Today, Kanai lives a life of wandering and singing for villagers in rural communities. The Baul's songs that he sings encourage brotherhood and mock the hypocrisy of the rich and Brahmins. Above all, he aims to connect common people with the divine through his music. His life story from tragedy to fulfillment is inspiring and highlights the power of music to overcome adversity. Throughout the book summary of The Nine Lives, In Search of the Sacred in Modern India, we gain insight into the myriad of belief systems in India and the people who practice them. The stories emphasize the ascetic foundation of Jainism, the social inequalities in Kerala, the struggles experienced by Tibetan monks, and the unique and esoteric doctrine of the Bowels. William Dalrymple captivates the reader with a tapestry of compelling narratives that allow us to have a deeper appreciation of not only the world of religious diversity in India but also the people who remain devoted to these beliefs in the face of the changing modern environment. This fascinating exploration serves as a reminder that while religious practices may differ, the search for the sacred remains a common thread that unites humanity 